about how you use the information hotline and how you're you're using it uh, to generate these less branded type of leads. Okay, so for the newest members in our group, the first thing we get you started with is is traditionally the less branded marketing solution to your lead generation. So we start with a less branded. So Amy, if you can flip the slide. So the information line is the number we would use in connection with a service type of ad. So let's say we've got an ad running that simply offers um, a list of properties, a list of foreclosed foreclosed properties, maybe a list of fixer uppers, maybe a report on what to do in the event of a divorce with your matrimonial real estate. Maybe we're offering a report, the 27 tips that you should know about before you put your home up for sale. How about the report, the 11 inspection traps to avoid before putting your home up for sale? Okay, so that's the information line, the less branded hotline resource that we would recommend you would use. Now, the reason your marketing piece is less branded, the technology is less branded, the caller calls that number, the in introduction they hear is of a less branded nature. In fact, if you just simply use the introduction that's available, what the, what the caller hears is, thank you for calling the real estate information hotline. Please kick in your four-digit ID code now. Okay, so that's the introduction that even comes with the system. It's 100% turnkey. The prospect then kicks in that four-digit ID code that you've put in your ad, and they hear a pre-recorded script. Okay, and in fact, if you use the script library that Mike and Craig have put together, I mean, all you have to do is flip it into the mailbox that you want to use in conjunction with your ad, and that's the formula right there. So there it is on the screen. That's our information line. Once they hear the script, and the script clearly tells the prospect what to do if they want to get what is offered in the ad, it's over. Okay, it's done. It's finished. The, the script is played. The message is left by the prospect, and the phone hangs up. So that's our, our very simple, less branded approach to generating leads using the information line. Now, there's another hotline that we talked about at the super conference, and you may recall that Craig and I referred to both of them. We call this the USP property tree. Now, this is more, as Mike said, of a branded presence that the prospect picks up on when they call the number that you've inserted in your ad. Now, the first thing that happens when they call is they hear an introduction. And we've recommended over the years that that introduction be recorded by you, the rainmaker. And one of the things you make available in your introduction are your USP, your USP offers. So you'll notice the box on the right. You get access to nine single-digit USP commercials that you can run when the caller calls in and kicks in numbers one through nine. Or the prospect could bypass that and simply kick in the four-digit ID code that goes in conjunction with the property that's being advertised. And then they follow the process through as Amy's going to go through the boxes here, you'll see what happens. So let's say the prospect decides to press, before they listen to the information about the property, let's say they decide to press button number two, digit number two on their phone. Because behind digit number two, you've offered to give them a little bit of information about your guaranteed sale program. Okay? They, they hear that. We tell them how to get the report we, we, we've offered to send them. And then we tell them, kick in the four-digit ID code that goes in with the property. You see? So they get to do both. And the whole process is very branded. And you can see there, we call it a tree because they can continue to go through property after property after property if they, if they choose to do so. So they can tree off of the main greeting and, and listen to a number of things. Whereas on the information line, they simply hear the one they've kicked in, and the system then ends. So the USP property tree enables a branded message to be played over and over and over again based on the four-digit code they can, they can go through at any time. And the service is there that if they press zero, they can be connected to a predetermined number that you put in the system. And that could be your cell phone. Okay? So you could generate um, you know, a conversation with the prospect right from your, 
from your USB property tree. So an example of the zero that I've used successfully for years is a quick little blurb in my script that simply says, if you'd like to find out the current price of this property, press zero now to be connected to our office, and we'll, we'll tell you what this property is currently listed for. That's been great for getting these prospects on the phone who are calling about one of my properties listed for sale. And, and by the way, that's a conversation I'll now have with a buyer. I'll use my universal callback script, and if it's appropriate, right from the hotline call, we'll book an appointment to sit down and meet with that, that prospective buyer. So there's two distinct differences. The USP property tree is, is awesome for your listings. It's awesome for the branded, the branded um, presentation of yourself. The information line keeps true to the less branded mode which eventually generates the lead as well. So both fit in, both work very well. Everybody should be using both in their lead generation strategy. If I could just add, Rick, every call that comes into both hotlines, both have a feature, a caller line ID feature, which will take the reverse directory lookup. So in other words, we are integrated with the white pages. So every caller that comes into your 800 number, you'll get a report or a message of the name and address and phone number that they're calling in from. So that's a really, right. really good, uh, good feature whether they leave a message or, or, or hang up. We right. also notify you instantly of that message either by text, uh, email, whatever you prefer. And we're going to actually go and do a, show a, a demo of this um, later in this call just so you can all interact and see how it all works from a mobile phone if you have your phone with you. Okay, so again, but both hotlines, they are designed to accomplish the same thing, and that's to get the prospect to leave a trail and help you qualify that lead and get that meaningful conversation, as Rick has, uh, has mentioned. So very well uh, said, Rick. Um, so let's get into the third question, and it had a lot to do about the uh, scripting, Rick, all the, the scripts and why scripting is so important. And as you know, uh, we have a library, both for the information line and the USP property tree, that has all the scripts that Craig provides preloaded, all done for you, recorded. All you need to do is select which campaign or which ID you choose to run in your campaign for buyers or sellers. We have, um, uh, we have on the information line, we have over 20 scripts, uh, there's about a bunch of them for classified ads and some for editorial cell ads and as a super conference attendee you actually get additional scripts and we'll, we'll show you this on the screen in, in a minute. And then okay. you have the, the nine um, USP property tree. Rick, why don't you get into scripting? I know you're, you're a master of conversion when it comes to marketing. Uh, why don't you talk about the scripting and about the tonality, the length of the yeah. message and conversion? Okay, so. This was something that we, um, we realized very quickly that we'd have to be conscious of. So when you run the information line in conjunction with your less branded marketing um, and you create your ad in the ad generator at the uh, CP Coaching website, um, we've got a script pre-recorded for all of those particular ads that you can run, the um, classified ads, the editorial ads. Um, we've got scripts already pre-recorded for those and all you have to do is flip them in and use those in conjunction with, with the marketing. Now over and above that, so the example would be here. So here's a couple of ads that would that we could look at. If you just back up a little bit, Amy. I had a couple of classifieds there. So here's the here's the example of where those would those would fit in. Um, the one ad there is the Ocean View Estates ad, lovely beachside homes on quiet streets. Here's an ad that uh, would just simply feature our VIP buyer program where we can help you get access to properties for sale. Just tell us who you are, tell us what you're looking for by, by kicking in that ID code 2434 or whatever you choose to work with. Same thing with the golf course communities are Westgate Golf, beautiful city and mountain views, huge tree yards, golf course lots, premium secluded streets. Again, the VIP buyer program works really well with an ad, with an ad just like that. Now if you go to the next, to the next um, slide, Amy, here's a couple more examples. So here's the ads that our members produce using our ad generator. Okay, there they are. I I created them and I put them in I put them in the ad today. But what I want you to really focus on is how we get the request 
from the prospect. So let's start with the two at the bottom, the two display ads. If you click your mouse there, Amy, it's going to bring up exactly what we want you to tell the prospect to do. So there it is. Quick pre-recorded message, 1-800, there's the number, kick in the four-digit code. Same thing with the other display ad on the bottom. We tell the prospect what to do to get what it is we're offering. Very important, lead generation 101. Make it easy, non-threatening, and relevant so they'll easily ask for what it is we're offering. So on the left, we're offering to tell home sellers what neighborhood properties are selling for. On the right, we're simply offering a report that outlines the six costly errors to avoid when, when selling your home. Great ads, they continue to work because they're relevant to the market. Now, the two ads above them, editorial style ads, there's a couple of, of ads that wouldn't be featured in the homes for sale section. They'd be out in the front of the newspaper as we're teaching you. But the last, the second last paragraph of each one of those little ads simply says to hear a brief recorded message about how to order your free copy of this report, call the toll-free number and enter the ID. Okay, so that's very important. That's a great way to generate leads without the prospect having to talk to you. You run an ad that makes total sense for what's going on in the marketplace. So that 11 inspection traps editorial, the one on the right, has been an absolute jackpot of an ad for the last year. Just for some reason, it's just been a great ad. So if you're going to use it, use it just like we're showing you there. Just use it with your hotline. You don't need to put a domain name in there because that doesn't work as well. When people call the hotline, they understand they won't be able to read the report. They understand that they'll clearly have to order the report, and they will do so. They'll leave a name, a phone number, and an address where we can mail the report. But that's what we want you to do with the information hotline and the script library that's available to you in the uh, AMS backend. Now go to the next page, Amy, and let's look at the difference. Now, this page is a page out of one of my advertising pages, and this is where we would use the USP property tree. Okay? Clearly, this ad is coming from this Rick Brash character. Clearly, I've got some properties in the ad. Each property, and if you flip it one more time, Amy, each property contains access to my hotline. So there's my, my, um, my property format. The, uh, the word at the top, Cranston, that's the name of the subdivision. My price, $649.9 or trade. A quick little attention grabber backing onto a park. An emotionally charged caption. And then in blue there, I guess Amy doesn't have the same font as we do. In blue it says, more information and want to color brochure, just call, listen, and order at, there's my number, there's my four-digit ID code, and we, we easily and, and uh, predictably generate the lead from somebody who's interested in living over in the Cranston area. So they call, they kick in the code, they listen to a quick, again, a quick emotionally charged caption about that property, and then I let them know that they can order a fully loaded, full-color feature sheet along with a list of every property for sale in the neighborhood, all they have to do is tell me where to send it. I ask for the name, the mailing address, and the phone number. Now, some of you are saying, well, Rick, don't you ask for email? And I don't. I ask for a mailing address. Okay, that works better. Whenever I can mail something to a prospect, I have a better experience with that prospect all the way through. But that's a great way to use your USP property tree right there. So hit the next slide there, Amy, and I'll show you another example. Now, this is a big old ugly sign that we carry around in the trunks of our cars. Anybody who lists homes on my team carries this four-foot-tall sign in the trunk of their car. And this is an older version of it. It's got my Remax balloon. I haven't been with Remax for a while, but you'll, you'll get the point here. The night I go in and list a property, before our for sale signage goes up, this sign gets left behind either on the lawn or it's propped up in the snow. Remember, I'm up here in Canada, and we have uh, 11 and a half months of winter every year. So I leave this behind, propped up on the, up on the yard, up, up on the, uh, in the yard, and what happens is people driving back and forth all of a sudden realize that this house in the neighborhood has been listed. So before the sign goes up, we try and get people to call into our hotline, kick in that four-digit dedicated code, 9889, and listen to our just listed script. And that's where we tell people how they can see this home 
before it goes on the MLS, how they can get a feature sheet on this property before it goes on the MLS, and then we tell them how to get that information, how to actually book a showing with one of our showing specialists prior to this home hitting the MLS. We do really well with our just listed program. And this was just something that we um, played around with a few years ago, and it works really well. So for the cost of a sign, which in this case is probably about 20 bucks, um, we generate lots of leads on a newly listed property before it hits the MLS. And like I say, it just rides around in the back of the truck, or the back of the car, whatever you drive. I throw it up and boom, we start generating leads immediately. And some of you are thinking, well, my God, that might be the ugliest sign I've ever seen. And I'm going to sit here and concur with you. It is one but ugly sign. But I could not, I could not tell you sitting here how many houses we've double-ended um, because that sign was out front on the lawn, and it's as ugly as it is. It's bright. It's yellow. We've heard rumors that airplanes actually land based on that being the ugliest beacon in town. I'm kidding. That's just a bad joke. But yeah, it's ugly. But it grabs people's attention. We get them to call and listen, and uh, we forge a relationship after that. So that's another way that we've used our hotline over the years. One more click, Amy. Now, here's, again, another example of how we've used our hotline in our advertising over the years. Um, one more click, Amy. There it is. So you'll see all of our properties contain the hotline number. Okay, very, very important. If you want to generate leads from your listings, this is how you do it. So all of my properties are, are done the same way. We use the same format, a picture, the name of the area, a price, access to our trade-up program, a headline to grab the interest of the property, of the uh, prospect, a very emotionally charged caption, and then more information is made available by simply calling and listening to a pre-recorded message of that number in, in, the, uh, in the caption. Now, honestly, I would much rather have a prospect call my hotline listen to our system in the hotline, then call my office. But if they really are hell-bent on talking to me, when they listen to my script, they will understand that all they have to do is press zero, because I make that available, and they'll be connected to somebody in my office, and we'll get them either get them in there as quickly as we can, or we'll get them the information they need as quickly as possible. And sometimes I get zero outs from people I don't really want to talk to, you know, sometimes I get a zero out from the neighbor or I get a zero out from somebody across the street or whatever. But look, it's going to happen. I've generated lots of listing appointments because somebody on the street liked our signage or liked what we do or liked how they can get a hold of me. And um, it's all done by pressing that, pressing that zero. Property scripts need to be emotionally driven. Okay? How do people buy houses? They buy them based on emotion. So I've always tried to keep my scripts as, most, as emotionally driven as I can, Mike. I talk about the things people are looking for. I talk about maple hardwood. I talk about granite countertops. I talk about stainless appliances. I talk about the location. Very brief, very emotionally charged. I let people create a full color picture in their mind's eye. And then to solidify what they're already hearing, I simply make a full color, fully loaded feature sheet available by simply leaving your name, your mailing address, and your phone number, and letting people know we'll get this property out to you as quickly as we can. And if you're looking for a list of properties for sale in the neighborhood, let me know in your message, and I'll send that out to you as well. So it's worked. It's worked really well for us over the years. And I, you know, Mike, you've seen my numbers. You know the numbers that we've generated into the hotline. And I just learned how to do this from Craig. If you look at Craig's USP marketing in the coaching website, you'll see this is exactly what he did. All I did was copy. I didn't come up with this. All I did was copy. And uh, the results of copying correctly were hundreds and hundreds of leads every single month just because we had listings available for people to see. And again, Greg, just to add, all these uh, scripts are, are, are proven and tested by Craig. Uh, they're all preloaded, done for you on both hotlines, and except for, of course, the, the properties, which change all the time. Rick, let's just get into the property scripts. We didn't sure. uh, get into a, as far as what you found to convert better, whether it's a, a female voice or yep. a male voice and, and the tonality. Why don't you talk just a little bit about that, okay. and we'll get into the next question. So anybody that's worked on my team had to go through a, a script testing procedure. That's just a rule. 
because if we had the, the golden or the magic voice, we were going to we were going to use that person. Um, so one day, lo and behold, I was I was off doing something for Craig, speaking somewhere. I, I don't know where I was, and uh, I called back to my office to see what was going on. And 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 Carol, who runs the show here, says that um, the, the the girl that was doing our scripts is, is is sick and she can't do a script. She wanted me to do it. I said, well, it's it's not going to work based on what I'm doing today. You do it, honey. Carol's my wife. I don't call the girls in my office honey, but I call my wife. Better be, be careful about it, Mike. I said, you do it because I'll help you write the script. You record it, and then um, I'll, I'll fix it when I get home if we need to. So Carol records the script, and lo and behold, she's got the perfect voice, the absolute perfect voice. And we looked at our, our, um, our report, Mike, that you can produce for us every month, and wow, people listen almost to the end of the whole script, and we had quite a few messages on on Carol's script. So we started to use Carol in my office, my wife, to record all of our of our property hotline scripts. And the reason was, after we tested her and compared her with all the others, we determined a few things. Number one, you have to have an amount of D and I in the tonality of your voice. Number two, you should be female. The female recorded voice works better. And I've tried them. I had my sons try them. All the guys that have worked on our team over the years tried it. The female voice works best. You have to speak slowly. You have to speak. You have to speak very clearly. You have to be articulate, and you have to clearly tell the prospect what to do to get what it is you're offering. So to get that feature sheet on our listings, you have to deliberately tell the prospect to leave their name, their mailing address, and their phone number and we'll get it out to you in today's mail. That's the language we use in our scripts. And lo and behold, Carol was really, really good at it. So at the super conference, whenever I do the hotline session uh, for a breakout for our members, Mike, at the hotline session, I play a selection of scripts that we've recorded over the years. I have over a thousand recorded scripts in our library here, and I play a selection. I play some funny scripts that I found on the road over the years, and then I play Carol's version of those scripts. And the difference is completely palpable. And you can see why we, we had such great success with, with our hotline. All you have to do is find that good voice locally. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's someone on your team. Maybe it's a buyer's agent. Whoever it is, test everybody you know and get them to record your scripts for you if, if your voice is no good. But preferably, use a female. It seems to be less threatening. And anyone on the call that's not comfortable recording property scripts, you can... We have, we have uh, girls in the office that uh, do it all the time and do a very good job. You just call into Amy, and, and she can uh, help you out with um, the options of uh, recording property scripts for you. But, Rick, that kind of leads us into the, the next question um, on how you determined what worked, what didn't work in regards to your, your script and um, a female over a male or what to say in, in, the, in the property. And we have a, a reporting system in our in the back end of the hotline system where you can actually go in um, and Amy, if you can type in the domain, it's trackmyqlleads.com. QL being quantum leap. Trackmyqlleads.com. Anyone that signs up for a hotline will have access to the reporting section, and there you'll find all the stuff you need to to know about all the calls that have come in. Right. How long they've listened to the message, the type of messages, uh, any messages that come, any hang-ups that came in on the call. So we have uh, three or four different types of reports. We have the detailed and, and summary reports. We have some color line ID reports. So you may have uh, multiple you know, uh, calls coming in from a certain buyer with, with the same phone call. So that would be a good good one to call back. And um, Again, we in those reports, we'll give you the name, and address, and number uh, of that call. Um, and you know, tracking and testing is is so important to marketing. If you can't track or test, it really is a complete waste of time and money, yep. in my opinion. And yep. Rick, uh, I'm sure you found the the AMS report um, very helpful to determine how you got to get these um, scripts really converting well for you well, in the property. I mean, what does Craig teach us in our coaching calls? He teaches us that the best marketers are actually the best testers. Right. So we, we're always testing, constantly testing. Everybody on the call today who's using a hotline, 
should be looking at their usage reports at least once a week. So we used to start our day off on Friday by looking at what had happened that week and then make any adjustments going into the weekend. That's what we used to do. Every Friday morning, we'd come in the office, we'd sit down, Carol would produce the reports that I need to go through stuff, we'd go through them together, and we would adjust accordingly. So the, um, the control panel that comes with the hotline has a number of reports. There's all kinds of reports back there. For me, the summary report was enough. The summary report gave me all the information I needed. Who called, when they called, how long they listened to my introduction, what the four-digit ID codes were that they clicked on, and did they listen to any USB messages? And if they did, how long did they listen to the USB messages? Now, interestingly enough, we would, um, we've would we gone from having longer property description, description scripts to shorter now. I would say today our scripts are probably at least a third to a half sh shorter in length than they used to be. People just seem to be busier. But the reason we know that, Mike, is we can actually see in our script when people would either hang up or move on to the next one. So we consistently work at making our scripts shorter, sweeter, and to the point so that we can keep people on to the very end. And in fact, we lead a script off by letting people know that at the end of this message, we'll tell you how to order a fully loaded feature sheet on this property. We'd give a, a, a quick dissertation about the property, and then we would tell people, people, tell people what to do. And that worked really well. The only reason I know that worked well is not because we generated leads. It's because we looked at our report. And the report tells me how long people actually listen to a script. And I got really scientific with this because I just loved working with the hotline tool. Th this was the, the ultimate freedom machine for me. I mean, sure, I, I have all the internet presence stuff going on for sure. But back in the day when I was really rocking and rolling, I did a tremendous amount of, of print advertising. That was where the majority of my lead generation came from, just like Craig did. I just emulated Craig's business. And, and wow, we, you know, we would look at all these property scripts, and we would look at what people were listening to, how long, et cetera, et cetera, and it, it enabled us to really streamline. We, we call ourselves the house calls group because you can make a house call on one of our properties. In fact, I own that trademark now, and we would, you know, we would look at the report We'd understand what people were doing when they called in, and we would adjust accordingly to the point where almost everybody listened to an entire script when they called in. So it's very important that you test and then track and, and really understand what you're tracking. That was important too, Rick. I know a lot when you were first testing that you, you talked very little about the property on the four-digit ID and then integrated the, your USP in that property. And by the report, and you can tell exactly when that prospect click this, you know, hit the, the single digit button that, to go to that USP script in, yep. in the tree hotline. And that's yep. very, very useful uh, to, to know um, what your prospect buyer or seller is looking for. Yep. Okay. It is important. It's, it's really important to know what's, what's going on. It's, it's important to understand what people are doing when they, when they call in. If your marketing is good enough to generate the call, you better have a clear understanding what happens when that person who's called in gets there and starts to pound through scripts in your hotline. Very, very important. Exactly. I mean, it, your thought process of the prospect, buyer, or seller has got to be congruent from the ad to the script and then the conversion part, which we're going to talk about next. The, the next question is all about conversion, Rick. Yep. And, um, you know, just to review kind of the process we, we just talked about is that we, we ran the ad. We captured the lead on the hotline message. We notified you of that message either by email or text or dial zero directly to your cell phone. Yep. And now we're going to talk about follow-up, which is a huge part of this whole process of marketing, in my opinion. And the money really is in the follow-up. But uh, if you can convert people, um, and they're saying like five to seven attempts from that call, but if you can get people uh, converted on a call, it's huge. So why don't we talk about the kind of the time and the motivation sure. and the conversion process that you use, Rick, uh, using the universal callback script. Yeah, so for those of you working with us in the um, in Craig's coaching group, uh, you understand how we, how we really prioritize the follow-up procedure. And to do it, to work in conjunction with this marketing, we're teaching you how to work with the universal callback script. It is the definitive way 
to generate for you a clear understanding of what the prospect's timing and motivation really is in their current status, their current process of buying or selling a home. So first and foremost, Mike, I just want to get that prospect on the phone. So if they zero out from a message they've listened to, great, I've got them. I can engage them in a conversation. I can control the conversation by simply using the universal callback script. No problem. I can do that. If a, if a message has been left behind in my voicemail box, which was the most common thing for me, you know, 12, 15 times a day we'd get messages, um, then I would call that message back based on the message they left for me. I would, I would, again, use the universal callback script to determine timing and motivation and then make the appropriate offer. And guess what? Not everybody that calls your hotline is a now buyer or a now seller. I didn't meet with everybody that called my hotline. But we followed up with everybody that called to determine what their timing really was. And you know, from an editorial ad, for example, you might meet someone who's very early in the process who is not worthy of your appointment at this juncture in that process. Let's say you get an editorial ad running and it generates a lead from someone who, after you've talked to them, clearly isn't going to do anything until September when the kids are back in school. So I'm not interested in meeting with a seller now if they aren't going to do anything until September. But the good news is I know. Okay, The good news is I know, and I can handle that prospect accordingly between now and September. But the same follow-up procedure allows me to also tap in to those people who've called about one of my listings and are actually looking for a house. And coming back to my use of the universal callback script, which allows me a clear picture of their timing and their motivation, that prospect would be made an offer to get together so we can spoon feed them the best properties for sale that only match their price location and search criteria. So we use that universal callback script for all the different types of customers that came to us through our hotline. And I'll tell you what, Mike, if you can just master that universal callback script, it will certainly make all the difference in the world. And I, you know, I have worked with a lot of our members over the years, and I will tell you that the most successful members have learned to use the universal callback script um, perfectly. They, they really see it as a building block in the system, as a fundamental cornerstone of what they're doing, and they've taken the time to really, to really learn it. And I did also. I think the universal callback script is one of the most important building blocks that you can bring to the conversion, the conversion process. And I love this too. The MIT LEAD study clearly states that the sooner you get back to a prospect, who's left a message or has at least called your hotline, excuse me, the better the chance you have of getting them on the phone. If you can get back to them within the first five minutes of them calling, the chances of you getting them on the phone are practically 100%. The longer you wait, the harder it is to get them on the phone. So there's, there's the statistics there. Look at the difference between calling in the first five minutes and waiting 10 minutes to get that prospect on the phone. So at the very end of the day, I just want to help everybody understand that let's get these people on the phone. Let's use the universal callback script. Let's gain a clear understanding of timing and motivation. And let's get the follow-up procedure started as quickly as we can. Because as Mike said at the outset of this question, that's where the money is in this business. The fortune is in the follow-up. And this system enables you to be really good at, at following up. Um, we mentioned, Rick, at the beginning of the call that we had a, a demo, and, and really um, what we did back in the summer of last year, we launched a, a new feature in the hotline where we tied it into the mobile component of, uh, of, of a smartphone um, to, to any of these prospects that are driving by your, your sign writers and, and dialing in to get information. Yeah. Um, on your campaign. Why don't you just run through that scenario, Rick, on how to flip, flip to the next slide. There it is there. So let's imagine that a prospective buyer has seen your hotline number on a for sale sign or is using their smartphone as they're looking through one of your magazine ads that features a, uh, a hotline in the ad. Okay, so they pick up their phone, they make the call, 
they listened to that pre-recorded description of the home, and a couple of things happened. They, they decide then and there that they want to hit zero and contact you to book an appointment, or they decide that they would like just, just to leave a message behind, or I can add another or here, or they don't do anything and they just hang up their phone. Now, under any, in any other technology choice in North America, guess what? As soon as they hang up, it's over. Okay, you're, you're done with that prospect. Now, a couple of things happen. First of all, let's remember, with the AMS system, the minute they call, their phone number and all the data that goes with that is captured for you. So if you want to learn to get really good with your script, call back your hotline hangups. Okay, just call them and have that conversation. But look, you'll love this. With the AMS system, if they call in on a smartphone, Mike's system, Mike's technology recognizes that it's a smartphone. And you know what that is. A smartphone is like an iPhone or a, a Samsung Galaxy or an HTC. You know, one of those phones that has a screen on it. That's a smartphone. Mike's technology recognizes that it's a smartphone. And it sends a text back to the phone. The prospect now automatically gets a text back to their phone. And if you go ahead, I think it's two slides, Amy. Go one more. There. There's the message that goes out to the prospect who has just called from their smartphone. In fact, if I understand it correctly, they get this text even before they hang up the call. Now, look right. what it says. It says, get priority access to all the hot new listings that match your home buying criteria. Now, below that, in blue, with the line underneath it, is actually a link. Now, the prospect who's looking at this on their iPhone or their smartphone just takes their finger or their thumb and clicks the link, and look what they see. Next slide, Amy. Poof. There it is. So there's the smartphone, and they see a landing page, a fully mobile optimized landing page that gives us a second kick at the cat to get some information from this prospect, where under normal circumstances, using the typical run-of-the-mill hotline technology that's out there, poof, they're gone. Here's a second opportunity for us to get the prospect onto a landing page, or at least information from them, because we've put a landing page on their phone that talks about something very relevant to the process at hand. So it's a little on the confusing Sorry, Mike. It's it, it can be a little on the confusing side if we're not techno savvy. The good news is, as confusing as it may seem, all you have to do is call Mike at the office, call Amy at the office, or someone in their in their um, sales group, and they will get this enabled for your use of the hotline. Okay, very very important to get this. The other thing I want to make sure you're clear is it's not just a, a generic landing page. It's a specific campaign landing page that you've, that you've chosen. And all the videos have been pre-recorded. You have a choice of, you can see a picture of me on the right one there and our good friend Jim Casey on the left. We also have that whiteboard animation coming, you know, where the hand draws a little message, a little cartoon, and the little words, really cool stuff. That's all made available to you the owner of the hotline, which just enhances the experience for the prospect when they call in and use the hotline number that you've put in your ad. And I, I got to tell you guys, this is really way cool. And this is the system I shared with you at the super conference where for those of you still lamenting the fact that we can't drive traffic from a Craigslist ad anymore to a landing page because Craigslist doesn't allow us to put domain names in our caption. Here's an opportunity where if you put your hotline number in your Craigslist ad and somebody calls from a smartphone, that person automatically ends up on a landing page. You see? Huge advantage to you if you decide to use this technology in conjunction with your online classified marketing. So here's the demo. Um, if you want to try this, try it right now, or you can simply write this down and, and, and try it after. Yeah, I would recommend it. Just write it down now, and there's the 800 number or 888 number you call in, and just all you got to do is, is call in, dial that four-digit ID, and you'll experience what Rick had just explained to you. So just pretend that you are the prospect. You are the, the buyer or seller driving by the sign writer interested right. in that property. Hopefully, 
I mean, our, the number one goal is to the dial zero so you can have a, a, a conversation, a conversation right. with the prospect. But if not, they leave a message. They may want more information on the property. However, if you don't get them on that, then you've got a USP um, right. that they can click on to a landing page, which is what Craig teaches you at these conferences. Okay, so you have really a universal kind of, uh, you have multiple options here to, 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 get, uh, to get the prospect. And as Rick mentioned, you can now take them online Sorry, offline, back onto online if you choose. And we just, have, um, uh, go ahead. Just back up one more, Amy. I just want to make sure everybody's clear here because I know the questions that came to me after we did this um, at the Super Conference in Anaheim and also in Fort Lauderdale. Can you, yeah, so there you go. This number, the one 471 that is your hotline number that you've got in your ad, okay? And what you've inserted in the ad is this four-digit ID code. So let's say you're running an ad for a list of fixer-upper properties under 300,000. Okay, you, you give the prospect this number to call, kick in that four-digit ID code, and they would listen to the script about ordering the list of fixer-upper properties. If they call from a smartphone, the instant they make the call, they get that text sent back to their phone. So this is pretty ingenious stuff that Mike and his team have 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 put together. Now when Rick mentioned that number, this is just the actual demo number for us. But yeah. the number that we, we give to you, that we assign to you is the number that you're going to put in the ad or on the sign writer with the unique four digit ID. Again, all trackable, all measurable. Um, so yeah, I mean uh, go ahead and test that after the call and from your from your mobile phone and really experience uh, um, what we're saying. And if you are interested in in uh, setting up a, a landing page uh, campaign. Uh, Amy, if you can flip a couple of screens. There's, we have four buyers, four seller campaigns. Um, you can choose which ones. We've got the, um, the uh, video ones that we showed, and now we've got the white animated uh, uh, videos, which are, we are now launching, and they're actually converting pretty good. We're, we're finding that, that the prospect is a lot more comfortable listening to these uh, these animated uh, cartoon uh, videos, but uh, we're still testing them all, all in the different uh, campaigns. So uh, go ahead, and if you're interested, call call um, our staff at our number. So, um, Amy, how are we doing for time here? We um, we're going to just about at the top of the hour, Mike. So let's let's okay. flip to the next screen because I got to go. Screen, uh, yeah. Okay. So anyone. Um, there's our information. Um, we're gonna we're gonna take some questions in a few minutes. But if you guys uh, have any questions about what we're talking about, if you have any questions about setting up these pages, or if you're at these two events and for whatever reason didn't um, get a chance to take advantage of our free trial, uh, free special, um, there's a domain to go to: automatedmarketingsolutions.com forward slash last chance offer with a dash in between. I don't know why they make it so difficult, but Amy, if you could. Kind of put that in the in the um, text side, on the right side, so they can make it clickable. That'd be great. Um, or you can call our number, and um, we you still have that opportunity to to uh, get involved in our free trial that we offered at the Craig Proctor Conference. And um, anyone that's interested, Rick, you may want to talk to, just quickly about the uh, Craig Proctor Conference coming up in in Washington D.C. I believe. Yeah, we'll be in uh, next weekend. Uh, Saturday, Sunday, Craig and I and James McDonald will be in Bethesda, Maryland. And there may be some of you on the call today who are registered to come to Bethesda and spend time with us. For anybody that wants to come to one of our super conferences this year, um, my my invitation stands. Come come spend some time with us. Send me an email, rick at craigproctor.com. I'll get on the phone with you. I'll send you a registration form. We'll get you set up for one of the next super conferences. And we'll meet you at the event. And at the event, you will learn how to use technology like the hotline, to really take your lead generation to the next level. That's what this is all about, making you a really good opportunity generator, opportunity creator for your real estate business. And you know, we'll take your lead generation, we'll put it on steroids, we'll show you how to use the hotline correctly, and we'll show you how to generate more leads for your business than you've ever, ever had before. Good. OK, Amy, leave this screen on for anyone who wants to take down the information. Why don't we take a couple of questions uh, before we, we end this call? Do you have any, Amy? I, I have a couple that have been trickling in, and we've just got um, 
some more that are coming through now. One of the questions, Rick, you had been going and uh, discussing that universal callback script, yep. and uh, Randy had just asked, you know, where do where do we get a copy of this script? Okay, you can contact your coach. If you don't have a coach, you can send me an email, Rick at CraigProctor.com, and I'll send you a copy out as soon as I see your email. Perfect. I have another one in regards to sign riders. Okay, so um, maybe you want to answer just, they're asking where do they get them and what is the verbiage that they put on their sign riders? Well, the, the sign rider is just something you hang underneath your for sale sign, I guess. I, I don't know who does your signs, but just get your local sign maker to make you a sign rider. And where, and, and where you might have something else, you put on the sign rider um, more information about this property, free recorded message, then your 800 number, and then your ID code. That's all you need. The point of the sign rider is to get people calling for more information on the property. Because as soon as they call, the script is compelling enough to get them to leave a message, and you also capture their calling number, which uh, if you want, you can call back. Now, I, people, that aren't, people that aren't leaving messages, I, I don't call them too much because I find those to be just about as close to um, cold calling as it can be. But, you know, but if that's all you're getting, then by all means, call them back. Call back everybody that calls your hotline because that's a great way to generate leads. And the important thing you said, Rick, about the free recorded message in brackets, it's very, very important to have it on your on your sign writer. It makes it more non-threatening to the prospect. Um, you'll get more calls. Yep, very important. Any more, uh, Amy? I've got um, time for one more question, Amy, that I'm going to have to go. <laughs> sure, no problem. Um, one of them is actually um, tied in with a few of the other ones here, and it's just basically asking about setting up the landing pages, um, which is more of, I think, an AMS type question that we can answer for you um, when it comes to getting the landing pages actually set up and implemented and, and tying them in I've, to the toll-free hotline. I have absolutely no clue how to do that. Absolutely yeah. no clue. <laughs> well, that, that's something that I, I can have. answer directly, but um, it might be best if say, we do a one-on-one -on -one after the call, so no problem. I was, <laughs> I was just going to say I have no clue how to do that, but I have a friend whose name is Amy. <laughs> She knows absolutely everything there is to know about setting up your hotline. So, look, 800-858-8889 is the AMS number. And when you get that, when you hear it ringing, press zero and talk to Amy. Amy's my good friend at AMS, and she's an absolute techno wizard when it comes to this stuff. She'll have you up and running so fast, the phone will be hot. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> a few other questions are coming on too about replays. Uh, there will be a replay. Uh, when can we have a replay of this call, Amy? Uh, we're going to make sure that we send everything out via email with the link so that it's a simple click. And okay. we're hoping to have this posted and up. Um, if not by end of day today, uh, you'll have it for sure tomorrow. So just watch your inboxes and you'll have a copy of that sent to you. Beautiful. And then just uh, for anyone uh, that's interested, Rick and I usually do a hot seat call. Um, usually it won't be next week because we've got another conference to go to, but uh, we have a hot seat call where we invite uh, people that are agents that are just in the trial process that are generating leads. Come on the call. I interview them, and it's a really good call uh, to come on and listen to what they've done and how they've applied the system and work for them. So um, yeah, these aren't coaches. These aren't the grads. These, these guys are the guys that are just starting out, and it's actually uh, good call to, to show up. Anyone that's interested, just type in that you're interested and we'll get you an invitation to that call. That should be in about two or three weeks, Rick. Sure. Just let me know. Okay. Well, we're, we're about four minutes after our time. I uh, want to thank Rick for, for joining us on the call today. I know you're a busy guy and I really appreciate you uh, showing up and, and Amy for, for helping us on the call. And uh, Rick, I guess you're off to Washington this week? Yep. Yep, Bethesda, Bethesda, Maryland. So I think I think I got to land. I think my plane lands in Washington, and then we we take a cab up to Bethesda. I, don't ask me the details, Mike. I just I just show up. You just show up. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Happy marketing, and we look forward to you um, on the next call. Thank you very much. Thank you.